All right, I'm Brian Campos, store manager of the Go Hunt Gear Shop, and today I'm gonna to do a gear dump video on all the gear that I'm taking on my Nevada archery deer hunt. Super excited for it. I got five days lined out. Uh, we are gonna go, my dad and I, um, gonna have a base camp with the potential to go high country and stay and backpack in. So I have kind of a mix of backpacking gear for uh, temperatures ranging from 85 on the high end down to probably 45 on the low end. So not too cold, a little bit warm, um, and that's what we're gonna jump into. So for clothes worn, the things I'm taking, I'm gonna go with the Go Hunt Softy hat. Um, got some miles on it, it's pretty nasty. It's been used. Uh, I got this, this big old hat. This is really good for if you're out in the sun. It's not the coolest looking hat. It's uh, by Sunday, um, but it folds up, takes up very little room. It's gonna protect your neck. If you're out there glassing or you're on a big stock, it's gonna take some time, you're in the sun, it'll protect you. So I'll have that in the pack. Got the Go Hunt Knit Beanie. Um, that's really good for sleeping on. It's uh, sleep, having it on your head while you're sleeping. It's soft, you don't wake up with, you know, when you got a beanie that's too tight. This is really good for sleeping. I do have the First Light uh, Brookstown Glassing Mitt. Might not need these, um, but if it's cold in the morning, I'll throw them in there. They don't weigh that much, nice and packable. I'll have uh, Prana pants that I really like, the Stretch Zion pants. And I have the First Light Obsidian pants. Uh, ran these all last year. They're really good for uh, early season when it's hot. Um, yeah, I like them. Uh, for base layers, um, I have a couple of the Aero wool shirts, just a brown one, uh, wicks moisture pretty well, and a camel one in the cipher pattern. Um, if we do end up going high country and backpacking, I'm gonna leave gear at the truck. So I, I do have extra that I'm not gonna be packing all this up the mountain. For the true base layers, I have the fuse um, top and bottom. These are nice. I, I really like the top. Uh, keeps you nice and warm, but not too hot. Kind of my, my puffy is the Brookstown um, puffy. It's like 10.6 ounces, I believe. Um, it's not gonna be super, you know, ultra warm. It's not meant for like a late season. It's kind of this, that early season uh, puffy. I've used it on a number of camps and I like it. It'll pack down nice and tight. Let's see here, I got a neck gaiter. Uh, where we were when we were scouting this area before the bugs were so bad and this came in super handy Just to cover my face keep my my hat down and keep me protected from the bugs for a little bit uh, I'll be running the half finger gloves really like these and have the browning um, uh, Gore windstopper gloves These will be nice if I got to set up a natural blind or break any branches have a little bit of protection um, This is more just for if I have a stock just a ghillie Gilly suit top. Um, so if I have something where I'm going to go stock in on something, I'll probably throw this on. I do have an arm guard to keep keep the all the stuff from getting snagged when I shoot my bow. So I have pants for it, but I'm not really concerned with the pants because I'm going to probably be low sneaking in. Uh, for socks, I'm going to run the Darn Tough 2011s and Farm to Feet lightweight. Um, if you haven't tried Farm to Feet socks. I would definitely recommend giving them a shot. They are comfortable. Uh, your feet feel good at the end, end of the day. Still love my darn tough, but I also like farm to feet. Um, we've got the Catalyst jacket. This is really good um, outer layer. Like if you have a puffy, put over. Uh, you can put it over that. Um, it's going to block wind decently. It's uh, fleece lined and durable. I've used it quite a bit. Uh, one of the kind of a little bit heavier duty um, base layers that I have is the Klamath from First Light. It's got the waffle pattern, um, keep the heat in. Um, doesn't have the thumb holes, uh, but it's quarter zip. It works really well. Uh, so that is clothes worn. Um, something along with stocking and from sitting water. I do have a hex suit. So this is kind of some technology is supposed to block your electromagnetic waves. You see on Shark Week, uh, the guys in the water have hex suits and they're supposed to 
not uh, alarm the animals as much. I've shot whitetail with, with this thing on. It's pretty cool, I got a, a mask and base layer is super thin, so it's not gonna make me super hot. So I figure why not uh, keep it on. So I'll have those. I'm um, talking about camo and, and blind type stuff. And I do have this, this is just kind of, just a, a rollout of camo, leafy. It's pretty long. I can set it up anywhere and have it around me. I can use it to enhance my natural blind. Um, just depends on what my, my situation is. If I have water, I'll take this. If I'm gonna hike way up on the mountain, I probably won't take this. Um, it just depends. So moving into food and camp, uh, and the cooking side, I guess. I run a Jetboil Flash. I've had this for probably nine years. Still works really well. Um, yeah, it's reliable, does, does the job. Uh, for food, um, some of my favorite foods that I take, sweet pork, one of my favorites, I'm trying out the uh, chicken uh, pesto pasta. That's new for 2019. Uh, for Mountain House side, I really like breakfast skillet. I'm gonna do some of the Pro Packs. So the Pro Packs are uh, slightly less servings, so they're, they weigh less, they're gonna take less water, um, and they're vacuum sealed, so they're nice and tight, take up less, less space in your bag. Um, so I'm gonna run some of those, pretty handy. I got some granola and just some other assortment of Mountain House that I'll run. Um, for Nalgene, instead of doing a full-size Nalgene, I like having a smaller one just because I'm taking like different supplements for hydration. So instead of filling, like using a lot of supplements in a bigger Nalgene, I'd rather just fill this up, use less supplements and just switch it out every day. Um, continue on with water. I will uh, have this uh, soft bottle filled up. This is a one liter platypus soft bottle. This is a really good way to designate your water for what you're gonna cook with. It's just easier to pour from this than try to get it out of your, your bladder or something from your pack. Uh, I will do the drum light four liter. This, these are super handy. If, like if, I, if we end up finding a deer up on the mountain, we'll fill this thing up and go hike up on the mountain, stay up on the mountain and keep hunting the basins um, versus coming back to camp. So this is a great option to pack in a decent amount of water. These come in two liter, four liter, and six liter. Use this on, I think every hunt last year. It's very nice. And you can easily uh, pour from it as well. It has the little spout. So drum lights are great. Um, for cooking, I run the Sea Summit Alpha Long Spork. This is a really a top seller for us. Um, lightweight, has, it's long so you can get into your meal easily without getting food and junk all on your hands. Uh, other snacks, um, I like running a see-through dry sack for my food so I can see what's in there, um, get in there easily from the outside, you know, see, what's, see what I got in there. Some of the things I like, uh, I got packaroons from Heather's Choice, blueberry. I have more options coming today that I'm gonna try. Um, got some honey stingers. A lot of the honey, honey stinger uh, fruit chews. Um, got some of the Cliff Block energy bars. So you know you're gonna go on a big hike, take this with some water, it's gonna help. Or you're packing out. I uh, got Cliff Bars. Also got some, um, call them hammer gels, just like an energy gel type thing. Use those a little bit. Uh, always like a payday out there celebration, you know, if I get anything down. And a uh, pro tip for trail mix, just add some candy corn to peanuts. I don't know if it's a Midwest thing, but if you haven't tried it, you need to try it. It'll change your life. Um, that's pretty much it for the food. Uh, for electronics, we're gonna run um, radios. So if I go up on the mountain, I can communicate to my dad, let him know, uh, hey, I'm gonna stay up here for the night. Let's check in in the morning at whatever time we can communicate. These are just the Midland GTX, I think 1000. Um, had them for a long time, changed out the batteries recently, and they've done great. Running the Black Diamond Spot headlamp, nice and lightweight. Also have the Petzl Reactic headlamp as kind of a backup. 
Um, so I'm running two of the Goal Zero. We got a Flip 20 that was last year's model and the new model Flip 24. This is slightly more power. Um, they're gonna charge your phone up to two cycles. Um, I just decided to go this route instead of having a extra panel, like a solar panel, um, and just take up less room. Uh, a little bit, I think they're like 4.6 ounces each. Not, not too bad. Um, got my camera, so I wanna film. You know what happens? This is just a Panasonic FC 300. Uh, just a point and shoot, has a Leica lens, 2.8 aperture, 24 optical zoom. So it really gets, it allows me to really zoom in on the animals, take pictures, take video, and just a road mic on the top. So enjoy that. Um, also got the crush light. So this is one of my favorite pieces still. My kids like it too, it's something fun to play with for them. But this is a rechargeable um, light, it has a couple different settings. Uh, solar panel also so you can charge it uh, while you're out on a hunt and it's nice and thin you can stick it anywhere inside your pack um, and it's not very much weight so I think that's electronics going into kind of the safety um, kill kit type stuff also I still run the trauma pack always have one of these with me has a quick clot sponge in there. So if you have a really bad bleeder, you cut yourself, you can use that. I also have inside my kill kit, uh, electrical tape. If I need uh, more, this will come with, come with uh, I think a couple feet of duct tape, um, but sometimes you need more than that. So inside my kill kit, I'll carry these Grime Boss wipes. There's just a few wipes left in here. I've had these for years. Use them whenever I get done processing an animal in the field. Um, if they're dried out, I just add a little bit of water. They have kind of a, a gritty texture, so it'll get any, any stuff off your hands. Nice and lightweight. Still running my buck knife I've had for many years. Uh, the buck light does just fine. I'll have the Havilon also uh, with some replaceable blades. This is the Havilon bolt. I do carry a saw, um, fairly lightweight saw, so I'll use that to um, use it for when you're cutting off legs or uh, you, you might need to get a branch off for a natural blind you're creating. Again, I have the electrical tape. I have the Work Sharp sharpener, little small one, very nice. Have some just uh, gloves, have some extra paracord, and the Havilon blade remover. So pretty simple. For game bags, I'm running the Muley game bags from uh, Caribou Game Bags. I'm just running three, so I got um, two big ones and then the one that's for like the meat parts. So back straps, tenderloins, um, any of the organs you wanna keep. I, I find that I only need that much. I'm deboning the animal, um, not packing out full quarters, just taking all the meat off the animal and putting them in here. So it should be good for me. Uh, for just these stuff sacks, I'll organize and have, it depends, like, Sometimes I will take the food out and put them in Ziplocs and write on there how much water I need and just like cut the serving in half instead of having this big thing. Otherwise, I'll, I'll uh, fold them over and put them inside a, a stuff sack. This is a Sea to Summit stuff sack. This one is 10 liter. Um, this one is a 15, so I think this is 10 liter, just for reference. Um, so I have a couple Sea to Summit dry sacks. And then I have my OR one. This is the ultralight version one. These are nice and smooth, um, pretty thin. So a lot of times I'll put all my clothes stuffed really tight inside of a OR bag. Works pretty well. Uh, rain gear. I have the Browning uh, rain gear. It works. I've used it in downpour. Um, not super, super light, but it's Gore-Tex, durable and it'll work when I need it to. So I'll typically put all my rain gear inside one stuff sack um, just so I can pull it out, know where it's at. I have a large pack fly for the pack and I'll be able to use, um, use it on the bow if I need to, if it's raining. Um, so I've got a pack fly. For sleep system, shelter, all that. So I'm gonna be running the OR Stargazer Bivy. This Bivy is awesome, used it multiple campouts um, is waterproof it's uh, 
lightweight, not much over, not much more than a pound. Um, and really, if, if there's no forecast for rain, I'll just take this. Um, the other option I have for shelter that I'll have at base camp or take up the mountain if I need it is the Seek Outside DST shelter. So this is 18.5 ounces. Um, it has, it's a decent size uh, shelter tarp. Uh, two people can fit in it. Just use a stick or a trekking pole to hold it up in the middle. I used it quite a bit. Um, I really enjoy it. I have my own piece of plastic, lightweight piece of plastic inside that fits my sleeping bag. Uh, but again, if it's not going to rain, then I'm just going to go super lightweight and go with the bitty. For sleeping pad, we have, um, this is the Neo Air X Lite. So this is 12 ounces, super light, it's going to be durable, um, it's going to be quality. So I'm excited to use this. For the bag, I'm going to go with the Spike Lake Big Agnes bag. This is 2 pounds, 6 ounces. Might be a little warm for what I need, um, but I really like it. It has good shoulder girth. I think it's a uh, 60 inch shoulder girth foot box. You got a lot of room. It's not one of those narrow, narrow bags. It's got a 36 inch um, foot girth and it's pretty comfortable. So it is going to be hot and sweaty. So I have a liner. This is a Western Mountaineering silk liner I'm going to be using. So just so I don't get my bag totally nasty every day. Um, these are pretty comfortable. And then I can wash this, clean this later instead of, uh, you know, affecting the down in the bag. Also, I didn't call out, but I have um, some Western Mountaineering down pants that I'll take. Probably won't need them with the temperatures we're going to have, but if I get in a pinch, if I end up pursuing something and I need to, to camp out there on the mountain, I can wear these and wear my uh, other layers. These are the flight pants. They have a windstopper in the butt. And in the legs, um, they're huge, but they are warm. So if you don't have a pair of down pants, I definitely recommend getting you some. Uh, we'll move into optics now. So this is the Zeiss Gavia. Uh, ran this all last year. This is a 60 power, 85 objective lens. This is a quality piece of glass. Um, it's going to weigh more than some of your smaller objective lens options out there, but um, for me, it's worth the wait. Um, so like the Gavia, um, for <clears throat> binos, I'm gonna be running the Zeiss Victory SFs, 10 by 42s. So this year, um, I just got the Bino Bandits that we sell. I wasn't sure if I'd get them because of glasses, but they do, they do fit around the glasses just fine. And, um, They'll work, I got a set for my dad as well. With the Bino Bandits, you can clip them to keep them protected. Uh, but I think I'm just gonna leave them open in my marsupial harness. So this is the 2019 marsupial Bino harness. It has a pocket in the back. It's really good for your cell phone. I'll have my phone scope in there. Instead of having your phone scope with the adapter sticking out of your pocket, a lot of times I'll just stick that in there. Um, Kind of, it's, it's very, really nice. I have my radio pouch and a rangefinder pouch for rangefinder. I'm doing the Leupold RX2800, um, high quality rangefinder. And then I got the long FHF lanyard. Uh, really like the lanyard and really like the harness. Got the rain cover in case you get really bad rain. I've been in rain with this. Rain didn't really affect it, but I have it. In case I get into something crazy. I'll have a um, little lens cleaner in there and I think that's it. So that's for this side. For 15s I'm running the Leupold Santium 15 by 56s. These are awesome on a tripod. If, if I'm hiking up the mountain all the way to the top I might not take them because uh, I'll have the Gavia but if I'm down ground level in the bottom of the basins definitely going to be using these um, high quality found a lot of animals with these I love them so definitely worth the wait for attaching uh, binos to a tripod I'm using the Leica Stabilite um, this is a really lightweight option it's going to be uh, you can use any any plate you have that's going to work with your tripod and throw uh, throw them on there and you can try you can glass from a tripod, which is really nice. 
Uh, tripod, nothing special. I'm using Vortex, um, I think it's called the uh, Summit tripod, carbon fiber. A um, little bit long, a little bit heavy, but this is what I'm using this year. It works for me. Um, should do fine for glassing. I got the Z seat. The Z seat is lightweight. It's 15 bucks, 14.95. You can use this. You can double it up. Um, glassing pad to sit on. You can use it when you're changing your your socks or something at camp. Um, very handy. Really recommend that. For boots, run the the Hanwag Macra Combi GTXs. Um, these are. Gore-Tex, uh, Vibram Soul, they've done really well for me. I've put a lot of miles on with these so far and really enjoyed them. Talking about more footwear type stuff. So I have these a uh, little bit old, but these are um, from Sneak Tech. They're Sneak Easy Boots. Um, living in Nebraska, I use these all the time when I'm sneaking around looking for whitetail. Uh, and I actually sp spot and stock a whitetail and I shot it and killed it. So. It can be done. You can spot and stock a whitetail. I don't know how they're going to do on the mountain. I'm going to take them with me. They're not a ton extra weight. If I have a stock, I'm going to put them on and give them a shot again. For gators, I like to play it safe. I'm going to run the snake gators. Um, I ran into a lot of snakes in my life, a lot of rattlesnakes, and I'm going to sweat in these, but if I get bit, I should be okay. So I like those. For uh, trekking poles, I run the Lakey Cork Light poles. This is very comparable to the Makalu pole we sell in the shop. Same features of uh, little uh, anti shock, uh, speed locks, and the same grip. So I really like the Lakey pole setup. Um, they're aluminum, so they, they, give, they have a little bit of give to them, whereas like a carbon pole is going to be stiff. Um, but I, I like the way these feel. Um, and so I like them. I do have rubber tips. Um, yeah, just, it just depends on what I'm doing. I like Corbide for just generally hiking. If I'm gonna stock in on something, I probably won't use them. Um, so I won't be putting the rubber tips on, I don't think. Four, I missed this, this is the Pelo. This is Cedar Summit Pelo. Um, this is one of their premium models. Uh, I've tried a number of Pelos. I really like the Cedar Summit Eros Pelos. Comfortable, sports your head just right for me. For Bo, uh, I got the Matthews Halon 32. Um, I'm running the HHA Ultra Light or Light Ultra Single Pin Optimizer Sight. Um, I have a Cabela's Instinct front and sidebar. I have the Tight Spot 5 Arrow Quiver. I also have the Arrow Gripper. If you haven't seen the Arrow Gripper, it just you can put this wherever you want. It's gonna secure those arrows in there better so they're not gonna pop out on you. You can also tighten this down here to make it tighter, more, sec more secure. Um, and I actually, I shot, shot this this morning and it has a really good balance, especially with the sidebar and it's quiet. So I really like that. For rest, <clears throat> I'm running a PSC Phantom drop away rest for release. Got a Scott release. I also have a backup release. If something happens, I lose this, it breaks. I'll have a backup. I have a bow hook, so this will fit on the side of my belt, and I can um, carry the bow on the side. So, um, like that. Let's see here. Let's throw this here, and then for the pack, we're running the Bear Tooth. This is new for 2019. Bear Tooth is an awesome pack. Um, you may have seen our other videos, but uh, the great thing about the Bear Tooth. Um, it's a five-piece belt system. Have a little bit of extra support right there in that kidney section, the hip section. I do have forger pocket on the side. I'm running my Peak uh, Designs clip for my camera. Easily uh, quick detach. Have my camera there, take it off. Um, and I just got a three-liter bladder on the inside. And I'm excited to put that to use. All right, so just some miscellaneous gear that I didn't cover. Just a lightweight emergency blanket. Never know if you're gonna need it. Little patch kit for sleeping pad. I have the Sawyer Squeeze for water filtration. Just a small tube of sunscreen. Um, some allergy medicine, some tweezers. You might get like a bad 
splinter or something. Uh, Earplugs, if it's super windy, um, you got a tarp that's making a ton of noise or your bivvy's making a ton of noise, uh, I'll pop in the earplugs to make sure I can get some sleep. And I got a tick remover in there, Allen wrench. I wanna make sure everything on my bow is tight and then just have this in case anything has to be adjusted or changed up there. And then I will take uh, this black hole broadhead target um, elevation in Vegas is not gonna be the same where I'm going. So I need to shoot at elevation um, and make some adjustments more than likely. So I'll take that in the back of the vehicle. All right, so that's the gear dump video. Let me know if you have any questions on any of the gear I'm taking. I'll be happy to get back to you. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos. We have a lot more content coming. So we appreciate the support and happy hunting.